fam, Richard here with another tech review. As you may have noticed, there's no Travis in sight. Today we start fresh, introducing you to my good friend Nelson, the PC savant, who you'll see every time we have any computer related products to review. We're going to take a look at his new and powerful gaming laptop, the MSI GE73 Raider. So sit tight, strap in as we go to his place for a demonstration. I am Nelson and I will be helping Ricky review this product as I've been testing it out for the past month. Uh, in the intro there you saw the keyboard. Uh, essentially why we have such a fancy keyboard on this besides it trying to be uh, flashy and you know get you all the girls <laughs> but uh, it's actually for macros and for games. So this is primarily a gaming dot, uh, laptop if you guys haven't already figured it out. Uh, quite simply, it's MSI's new product for the GE series. It's the GE73 Raider. Now, the differences between this and the last series is, well, the keyboards on MSI that has always been uh, colored are RGB keyboards, but they've been sectioned. So you'd have different sections on each side. But this is individually keyed. You can change it to anything you really want. And this is the software that will allow it. What you have here is Prism Sync. You can actually have any Steel Series product uh, sync to this and your keyboard here on this laptop. Essentially, it allows you to be really RGB'd out. I'm not quite sure. Um, that one's gonna get you too many girls, but it will certainly impress everyone else, myself included. You'd get jealous of that. You got, of course, your Discord, uh, and this actually is for the keyboard as well. You'll have different keys light up according to different functions. It's just a general, quality of life thing that will allow you to really keep track of things that get really complicated. And as you can see here, that comes into games like Dota 2. CSGO will have its own uh, layouts here. As a matter of fact, let me show you that right now. You see here, uh, right away you see WASD. You see all the buttons where your guns would be. Uh, you can also have ammo counters, I believe. So they'll light up a certain different way depending on the application you're using. And uh, apparently, you can make your own apps here. So, I mean, if you don't have a game here already here, like Minecraft or whatever, uh, you can go ahead and make your own. So, how <laughs> excited you would be to do that, I don't know. But nonetheless, the options are there. The point, the point is, they pretty much threw everything, including the kitchen sink at this laptop, uh, because they could. And I guess we've been wanting it. Essentially, you see here, you have a separate button to change the functions of the RGB keyboard. Uh, now, the other cool one here, and this one might come in handy, but I'll tell you what, in my time using this laptop, I've never really needed to use this, but this just cranks up the fans. This will bring them up to max rotations per minute, which I believe is something like 52 or 5,500 rotations per minute. By the way, I'm going to talk about this too. This is actually the system software that you can have an app on your phone to tell you the temperatures, the rotation speeds, your network speed, and everything that you would need to kind of see while you're in game. And of course, you can't just be toggling in and out. Um, the performance of the laptop allows you to do that, but you really don't need to. At the end of the day, uh, this makes it easy. So you can just put it right there and you can start overclocking. Yes, that's right, you can overclock this laptop. Why can you do that? Because cool, uh, it has a new technology called Cooler Boost 5. It has seven heat pipes in the back uh, that allow you to put a GTX 1070 in it. So I guess I'll get into the specs right now. The specs are a Core i7 processor, 7700HQ. It's the seventh gen processor. There is 8th gen coming out within like six months, but this is the first laptop that I've seen. I'm a big desktop guy, but this is the first laptop that I've seen that I felt like the sacrifices would be minimal to do an upgrade right now. And why that is, is quite simply uh, because a Pascal processor like the GTX 1070 allows you to pretty much have desktop performance in a laptop now. It's not a sacrifice where you used to have a mobile 
processor of the same graphics card, uh, you no longer have to sacrifice a thing. This actually <laughs> uh, performs just about as well as a normal GTX 1070 on a desktop. As a matter of fact, it has more CUDA cores than the desktop version. And they did that because of course, they had to uh, cool it down a little better. However, you can go ahead and just overclock it yourself with MSI software. Uh, you can go ahead and grab uh, the MSI Afterburner. Uh, did I close it? Yeah, I did, here you go. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. And uh, you can use MSI Afterburner with any laptop. It doesn't have to be MSI. But, you know, it just so happens that it is an MSI laptop and that works pretty well. Here we go. Uh, you can see that I've already, I can turn off the fan by the way. So by the way, that sound you hear there, that's at its loudest possible. You're not gonna get near there. I'd say you're mostly gonna get around 4,000 rotations per minute. Uh, it's actually really good. We'll play it Overwatch in a bit and I'll show you guys why. Uh, you can see here I have overclocked at 125, core clock and up to 100 memory clock, uh, higher than it actually comes factory. This does not, believe it or not, uh, negate thermals. Thermals actually stay about the same. Uh, it's just simply because you can't up the voltage, so you can't actually get hotter. You, you can crash, you can crash out, but it's not gonna um, get a little warmer because of that. It's just kinda trying to see what the maximum it can boost to uh, while using the same voltage. Now, speaking of which, you do, I think, necessarily have to undervolt all laptops that are gaming laptops. That's because from factory, they all chips are not made the same. All silicone does not work the same. But if you, from factory, uh, just start using your laptop, you'll notice that temperatures can reach up to 80 degrees. Now on a laptop, a gaming laptop, that's actually not unheard of. Uh, some laptops get up to 90 and it's actually fine. It just doesn't feel too good if you actually use it on your lap. So this software here that I'm putting up is the Intel Extreme Tuning U Utility. This is actually straight from Intel. The cool thing is you can go here and start uh, undervolting. Where is this thing? Core. Yes, I agree. Here you go. You can undervolt, you can offset. I found that you, uh, probably a safe start is like around 120 undervolt for the Core i7 processor on most laptop. I was able to take this one to around 160 uh, comfortably with no problem. Now, why you wanna do this, and you guys can uh, ask us questions in the comments below if you want, is because you can actually uh, improve thermals. So I found that in most games where I was getting around 84 degrees Celsius on the core clock, which by the way, it didn't kind of represent out here. Out here, it actually feels kind of good. This is brushed aluminum. The construction is brushed aluminum on this thing. You can see that MSI logo lights up as well. It's pretty fancy looking. It looks like a race car. Uh, and it really performs like it too. I mean, why, anyway, going back to this is why, because uh, you can actually bring down the temperatures by 10 degrees. And that's actually really substantial because that gives you a lot of headroom on a lot of things you can do. And it just ends up being a really good experience. It's kind of funny to see some games hitting 65 degrees on a gaming laptop. That's pretty unheard of. Uh, and the Cooler Boost technology does do a good job of it. The next thing I want to talk about just briefly again, I want to retouch on the keyboard. Right here, you can see we are over here on the engine applications of the SteelSeries engine. They, of course, make good uh, desktop keyboards, but here you'll see that every little applet has its own configuration. Uh, the audio visualizer, you can change how the, it does the settings and what it actually listens to. Here's an example. You can quite simply, per key, light anything up you want. Uh, and again, this is for ease of use, quality of life. If you have an engine or an app that requires a lot of keys that you might not always remember, this gives you uh, a, another way to do so. And um, yeah, let's move on to some gaming performance. All right, another thing I wanna talk about guys, is of course the performance. The Here we are running Overwatch on uh, pretty much ultra settings. I'm pretty sure I just switched the toggle over to ultra. You'll notice up here, we're hitting sometimes near 200 frames 
really depends at 160. I'm sure obviously with some action that will come down, but why is that ludicrous amount of frames per second necessary? Well, because whatever, bigger e penis. But also because this monitor, I haven't talked about it yet. One of the best features about this laptop is actually that it's an 120 hertz monitor. Now you're not gonna see it on this video. You won't be able to make the difference or tell the difference, you gotta see it in person. But just let me tell you, everything looks fluid. If you can imagine a very fast refresh rate, in order to actually take advantage of the 120 hertz monitor, which is at three millisecond response time, by the way, is you have to hit that amount of frames as well. So if your computer isn't fast enough to hit 120 fr frames per second, you're not gonna take full advantage of the 120 hertz monitor. Uh, so that's why the combination of the GTX 1070 and the i7 7700 HQ is good because uh, you need that kind of performance. Now, what I find too is that this is a 1080p panel. Sure, you can get 2K or 4K, but what I just talked about is not gonna be able to happen. If you're trying to produce 4K images, it's just not gonna handle that way. Another one thing briefly here, now that you can see my usage of it, is if you press the function key, it will also just highlight the functions. Keyboard brightness, uh, screen brightness, volume, uh, and a few other functions up here. Now at the end of the day, what's funny here is I was just telling uh, Ricky here, is that that desktop over there, uh, that one, it's pretty good. It has a GTX 1060, it has a Core i5. It's a pretty good gaming PC as well. But this outperforms it. And at the end of the day, this screen is pretty incredible. And you got it all in a frame of under an inch over here on the front and just above an inch on the back. It is actually pretty exceptional. You'll see some LEDs there too. So, you know, after one month of using this, I gotta say, I think I made a good choice. Uh, I've definitely been productive. Now, if you're asking about battery life, I'd say it's a gaming laptop. <laughs> you're not doing this to carry around at school for eight hours a day. But you know what? It's not horrible. If you actually go ahead and do some of the different functions, uh, or uh, change the different settings to low power mode and stuff like that. I've heard people on forums uh, say that they've been getting around five to six hours, but you know, that's, you know, very like web usage and just normal general, nothing gaming. If you're gaming, you're gonna boost that processor and that graphics card and it's not gonna be pretty good. So, at the end of the day, if you're looking for a laptop that doesn't really sacrifice so much, this just might be the case. And you notice here the temps uh, during that gaming session it reached around 67 it was, and this was around 70 for the CPU. Of course, the i7 always runs a little hotter. It's just what it is, nature of the beast. But as you can notice, that would have been somewhere around 80 plus without the undervolt. So I do encourage everyone to do an undervolt on their laptops. It's just almost a necessity. They just always boost the voltage up because they don't know what kind of CPU you're getting and you won't either until you start figuring it out. Thanks guys. Uh, leave comments below if you are having any interest in this kind of content and if you have any questions about this laptop or undervolting or anything in general that I touched on today. Thanks again.